and a hero that's been somewhat underwhelming for a little while, but being played here in these best of one games, what do you think? Yeah, this comes back to some of the uh, the older logic about best of ones. There's this idea that people get scared, right? They don't want to take as many risks because, of course, one punish and, and your TI, your tournament, your year, or in this case, two years, is essentially over because you made one bad move in a best of one. And so when it comes to safety heroes and heroes that can like really take a game late, Naga Siren's right up there with the best. Well, we'll see if they can take it out to the late game indeed, but not too late because Luna looks very freaking scary uh, as you get later and later. But Chuan facing off against Bryle in this mid matchup, one that we've seen time and time again uh, throughout the, the COVID season. And Storm Spirit facing off against Void Spirit. And we'll see if they're going to be able to get off to some decent start early rotations, most likely from the Void and what Bryle wants to do in the Storm. Yeah, they have quite the battle throughout the entire game, right? Of course, they're both Spirit heroes. So you sort of know what they're up to, trying to get good initiations and pick off potential to set their teams up for the hundreds of death on a single person, just bringing them down instantly. And, uh, you know, Storm has to be a little bit more concerned about potential rotations, but these days we're, we're fairly busy on the side lanes. Absolutely. And speaking of those sidelines, can take a look up here on the top side. Jabs facing off against Dubu in the support battles mm -hmm. and trying to steal away those uh, Treants every time they get an opportunity to. And Death playing on a hero is very comfortable with this Legion Commander. It's been seen a rise, both flex into position five, but also still being played into that position three route like we're seeing right now and trying to be a, a decent laning matchup against Tomato on the Nalga. Yeah, for sure. It's something that you'll see very often even in just like pubs and stuff. But I thought Insania brought up a really good point about just like when it actually gets in that like mid and especially like the later parts of the game when the illusions get uh, very tanky, it can be a little frustrating as a hero to try and deal with that part of the wave push. So uh, luckily you will still have the pickoff potential to, to try and uh, bring Naga back down to size. But uh, the two of us, we were very blessed during the group stage oh, to yeah. watch this Jabs Nature's Prophet before and it was infuriating to watch. I, I, I can tell you easily it was the most annoying looking opponent of the entire group stage that we saw. Right, and the big thing that he was doing constantly was blocking out ancient camps, blocking hard camps as we DJ. Get a little bit of pressure here onto Moon, who's keeping the wave back. This is going to be a lot of damage as they connect in with the cogs also. Starting to get some creep damage into there, and Moon getting body blocked now. With Saberlight coming over to help, that's going to be enough to get that Earthshaker away. So that does set them up for a little bit of a double. Oh, here, he's got friends here with all these creeps, more battery salt and cogs. And some trouble. Saberlight trying to get a little bit away from him, but the damage already coming out from that clock and Raven moving into position. Saberlight dropping lower and lower the lucent beam. And DJ drawing first blood. Oh, first blood onto a clockwork two. Already has the boots. That's going to secure the tranquils now for DJ starting out. And I mean, you got to love seeing this matchup too. DJ, an amazing clock player. And then Moon Meander, uh, even back in his off lane days, one of his more iconic heroes in the Earthshaker. Uh, probably the, the one I would choose for him if I was going into a best of one. And oh, I yeah. said, you know, he, he loves having the team on his back. He loves being able to just like pump them up and make that big play. And Shaker's one of the absolute uh, best heroes right now from the position four to do that. I mean, literally every TI time, Earthshaker just comes back, right? Yeah. Like, people just love this guy. It punishes mistake. It's everything you want. Valve has an agenda. I, you know, there's, there's some Earth Shaker players there. It's, they want it's the quite totem. obvious. There you go. That's fair enough. Uh, so you can see DJ again zoning back with this clock position five as in the mid lane. We haven't really taken too much of a look at it, but uh, Chuen getting a little bit of the lead right now. 20 and 5 versus the 17 and 1. Nothing really to write home about. Obviously has that calling blade and a little bit of that damage battle. Uh, being played out there mid. Yeah, and of course, uh, Undying always trying to get Bryle off to a, a decent start so that he can make those plays across the map and secure that late game for Tomato. So you can see they've already covered his, uh, his small camp there to ensure that's going to be there for the Storm Spirit. Always an important tool. Don't want to have that blocked out like so many teams have been doing. Right, and because of that, you're seeing the rotation that comes over both supports wanting to ensure that they don't get a rune up, but Shun still able to get it. Two supports rotate to his lane, and he still gets a water rune. Pretty good play. Nah, that is definitely not ideal. Uh, on the other side, though, Dubu does secure the boundary rune up top, which, of course, Jabs is now coming over to check. And, uh, well, Jabs will find that his own camps have been messed with this game, thanks to Dubu. Very well played.
So yeah, a little bit of a, a steady start as we go into this uh, best of one, but the rotation's coming now from Dubu. They want to try and slow down this Void Spirit, if at all possible. And for the moment, at least, you know, Naga Siren just completely free, heads off into the jungle. Tomato left alone. Yeah, Jabs is like wandering around up here. Like, guys, I think they're just gone, you know? They blocked off the higher camp themselves to take away a little bit of fire from Tomato. Now Jabs will send in the trance to scout, but now he's like, just bottom. Down bottom, but saved by Moon. Jab's rotation not able to bear fruit as Saber Light going to continue to play a little bit on the weaker side. But now as we get to this five minute mark, this is where Night Stalker can start to shine a little bit going for that 2 on one build. Yeah, we saw Jab's uh, a lot of early points into teleportation the last time we saw him play this hero, just trying to get active all across the map. And he has another good game for it here, right? Uh, Luna, if you're you're trying to like last it versus the hero, you're never quite sure when she's going to like turn on you and get a stun and lean some kills. And uh, of course, following a clockwork all game is always going to be good too. As you can see, Bryle's still not level six. So they want to put some pressure on. Jump in right away. Only level five right now on Bryle, but they move in with the nature's attendance to heal him back up. So Bryle will live through that. Not so lucky as DJ. Good rotation, and right now, Dubu, the man making the moves. Dubu with the baits, hiding behind the tree and popping out there with the help of the Seder. Turning what looked like a free kill onto an underleveled Storm Spirit into a reverse back. And you can see kind of the differentiation that we're seeing between these two teams, right? There's a, this core combo of heroes that have pretty good CS, but it's really supports on Undying that are trying to make up for that differential in terms of their net worth as well. Oh, and Moon Man are even messing with these darn treants here. Came over trying to get the rune. He's able to take that out. Jabs did manage to deny another one, but he might also be a... Uh, Dubu. Oh, nice. Goes down. So they're able to make that move over. Bryle does get the Ops Ward, but comes at a cost. And Jabs is everywhere. Going for the uh, the urn, same build as last time too, and uh, yeah, once more tomato you can see there, just uh, just farming away through the jungle. Not, nothing too surprising, item build wise. Manta coming out first here after the treads. Tomato definitely has been a standout player. I will say it feels a little bit different than some of the other heroes that he's been on recently. Uh, when I think of Tomato, particularly throughout the DPC and everything else, it was like a Monkey King, that type of active can sometimes mm -hmm. get in there, hero, but uh, swapping it up in this time and playing that Naga, we'll see how he does on it. As the seven minute mark comes around, you can see the battle still going off as a couple of heroes rotate bottom, Dubu. Wanting to get active, and DJ is going to be there to break the smoke. The cogs oh. down, Moon hoping to break this, but of course, the Clockwork versus Shaker dynamic, but he's able to get that Fissure block off. Moon Meander moves over, and Saberlight trying to play cleanup as DJ going to take him for a little bit of walk. This space created, but in the yeah. end, he will fall. He's dying there, but he just saved Raven, right? Yeah. Raven was in trouble. There are some benefits here. You are the Luna, so you're going to have that bonus night vision. Of course, they're mostly going to be trying to make plays on you at night. You know, that, that's kind of what Night Soccer lineups do. So uh, already going to be helpful there, but still best that your carry doesn't go down and, and well played there from DJ. And look what his, uh, his other teammates are doing here, pressuring into that mid lane, bringing over those supports. Once again, Mumi and Dubu, I feel like, uh, well, particularly Moon, going to be very under leveled with how much movement he's had to uh, incur here. Yeah, not necessarily what you want out of that uh, that Shaker. Loves to get into the quick blink dagger, but they need him. As the opening starts in full commitment for the runes, you can see they're, they're really wanting to play around that whenever Storm gets an opportunity. Unfortunately, this time for Undying, it's only an invisibility. Fanatic are sure to be hate thankful about. <laughs> yeah. Are and uh, the, the easiest player in the game has got to be Death. I mean, top of the net worth, 58, 11, big old goose egg, goose egg, goose egg, and the KDA, he's, he's just chilling. He's having a great time. Bring up health to start, so his landing stage isn't going to be that big of an issue. And with phase boots already done and bringing out the full wand, he can be the, probably the strongest hero on the map right now, potentially, with the exception of like the Void Spirit. Now they're uh, trying to pressure DJ down bottom. They missed the Fisher, but they do at least get the block off. Nicely played. Cogs down. Are they going to fully commit to this one? Doesn't look like it. And instead, they will let him live for the moment as top tier one tower goes yeah. down. They're, they're trying to mirror this movement and put some pressure on the bottom lane. The second Dubu couldn't contest top, he TP'd to the bottom lane. Heads come down here, grab a creep. Of course, one of the weaknesses of Enchanters, you're not exactly the best at going from one end of the map to the other uh, if you've recently uh, enchanted a creep. But we'll just grab uh, some creeps here and, and start hitting away. 
absolutely. Top, top lane. Top here. Yeah. This should be a really Play easy active. setup. And there's the pull in. They've got him caught for the moment. Going to pop ulti from Saberlight as the chase down comes. And yeah, there was just absolutely nothing Death could do as soon as Bryo was there. And also, on the other side, find themselves one kill, pulling back onto Moon. Look at this, Fnatic making the moves that they need to as they find two in return. Yeah, perhaps uh, Depth sort of knowing what, what he's doing up there, right? Being that far in the lane, I, I'm sure expecting that a rotation would be coming, but you saw how what a struggle it was to even bring him down there, right? Taking two of the core heroes, so easily able oh. to jump here, yeah. And again, DJ gonna be caught. Tomato trying to run him down with those illusions, but they don't have the ability to chase any further. He has wasted so much yeah, of their time. He really has. Yeah. So he's trying to take the crown of most annoying support player on Fnatic, it seems, because it, it feels like they're just constantly chasing him, bullying him back. I mean, think about when they dove him behind that tower. That tower is still up down bottom. Yeah. After all that, right? So plenty of space here and uh, gives Raven a little bit of safety uh, as you move through your own jungle and up to your ancients. You can see the line even being drawn by DJ saying, all right, bottom's mostly done. We're going over the top side of the map here. I, I want to push them away from, uh, from our Luna's new camps here. So in towards mid, they go yet again on to Saberlight, the pullback, the rundown. Do they have enough though? Doesn't look like it, but the Clockwork hook shot in afterwards. They got Moonmander locked down and killed. Last time Saberlight gave up his life, this time they turn around and take down Moon instead. And now it's pressure onto the middle tower here. The next lane to perhaps go down here. Catapult wave is here. Saberlight being zoned back. And they just can't do anything. And in fact, Saberlight, if he's not careful, he might also fall. So Chua and DJ making the moves, taking down this mid tower. And if Undyne aren't careful, they're going to get shut out of their entire map. I see five heroes. I see four points Lunar Blessing. And I see one very dead tower. Mm. This is deadly for Undyne. They will also deny that tower down bottom. So even when they're finding tower and objective kills on Undyne, it comes at a cost. Undyne picking up some extra gold from that one. Oh, now? surely they got to get this one, right? Oh, the DJ. Toy. <laughs> it's just a way. They're playing it too clean right now in Fnatic. This is really solid Dota. I'm mean, I feel like, uh, wait, you heard, well, I'll, I'll have to wait for this one. Oh, my God, God immediately into the Cogs pushback. Dude, DJ is everywhere. The, the amount of resources that have just been wasted by him is, is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, Stormy, you need every bit of mana right now, right? You're playing a hero down. They're willing to bring five heroes to a fight. You are not. So Storm has to do a little bit more lifting than is required from the Void Spirit, and uh, hard to do that when you're constantly being... Uh, Annoyed once more. Well, and some of this obviously is going to be, as we see Jabs also there, denying one of the bounty runes with mm -hmm. those treants. That's the other thing that he was doing pretty consistently. Uh, but it, they haven't really been able to find good runes for Storm, even though they've gotten each of them. Uh, the invis that one time we saw just now an illusion rune picked up as well. Not necessarily there for kills, but this one at least will allow him to play a little bit more aggro. Chua in the meantime, trying to get into the Yule Scepter. One thing that I really like is that uh, Fnatic aren't panicking about the Legion Commander. Because sometimes nope. you'll see a, a Legion who just like starts hunting and smoking and everything, but like why? You know what I mean? I, I feel like Death's just having a free game. Yeah, he sure died the one time, but it's all right. Oh my god, is DJ going to get away yet again? Ryle pops in, the Earthshaker and Fisher comes out, tries to bring him down, DJ ends up falling in the end, but they kill off the Storm. What a cost! Echo Slam afterwards, trying to find something right now for Undyne. Can they get any more? Do you backs away, but there's the duel going to connect now onto Saberlight, and with Raven moving in, it's going to be another one biting the dust. Undyne lose two in exchange for two, but it's much bigger with the mid and off lane going down. Uh, and on the other side of the map, you can even see Tomato trying to hold this game to get the first team, being chased around by the Treants. It looks like he did get the spawn at the very least this time, so we'll have some Ancients that he's able to farm. Not taken away for once, but so much pressure, and, and there's the replay. All for a D ward, of course, and DJ almost getting away with another Tumblr's toy. Unbelievable. I, and just so much that I pressed the attack down. right there, too. Yeah. Just, just a little bit. Oh, unbelievable. And then the Echo, obviously, to try and turn whatever they could afterwards. But uh, by that point, having lost the Storm, it already felt so bad. And, and a quick and easy duel rundown. So with that, Fnatic take a 2,000 gold lead. At the very least for Undyne, the saving grace, Tomato. Been able to get some AFK farm sitting top of the net worth. What does this Naga need to do in this game? 
Well, wants to contribute sooner rather than later. So currently eyeing up an Orchid, which uh, I, I would say would be quite quite a good option here. Yeah, Storm, or sorry, Void's going to have the uh, the Yules early on for sure. But, you know, Storm's not going for an Orchid right away. Tend to try and avoid that enemy these days on the Storm Spirit as DJ will shove back his uh, opponent there. Almost able to connect the Tumblr's toy, doing a lot for that clockwork. Uh, maybe one of the best Tumblr's toy games that I've seen in a while. Able to make a lot of escapes as well as a couple of those initiations. Didn't quite connect that time. But still, Saberlight backs out, and you can see that Undyne are not being completely zoned out of the map. They're mm -hmm. still getting some good farm, able to farm all the lanes. Yeah, there is a bit of the vacuum effect happening, though. This tends to happen with your Terror Blades and your Naga Sirens, where maybe you have a greedier support on your team, right? Like, perhaps an Earthshaker. Mm. We'd love to get a Blink Dagger at some point, but it can be very difficult to actually find that safe place to farm, uh, oh. because you've got Naga Sirens pushing out these waves and, and getting the creeps further and further from your base, because you're just so necessary that you pump this Naga Siren up as much as possible. And you can see right there as well, they, they brought in Bryle to bottle that bounty rune, worried a little bit about those treants taking it away. So 15 minutes now as the bottom lane will get pushed in again by these illusions and Raven feeling fairly comfortable trying to queue into that BKB next. Yeah. I definitely worry for Undying uh, when this BKB comes out on the Luna. I feel like it's going to be a very tough timing for them to fight. And you're also looking towards a, a BKB next onto the Leech Commander melee of a friend, er, eventually. But for now, it is the Blink and the Hood looking for a kill. Mm, and look at this. Wants the first duel right another game. Saberlight, oh, gets caught off in the tree. It's not often you get the Night Stalker at night. But when you have that clock vision and initiation, it's yeah. easy as pie. Uh, the Max Lunar Blessings are so good this game. Like, it, it's such an excellent idea to use this versus the Night Stalker. Just run into their territory and take away that advantage the hero's supposed to have. Like, it's difficult to prep for the setup that you're, you're supposed to have this this edge over your opponent. Oh, it jabs. He's hunting. He's looking. Oh, and... Ward behind. Oh, tree they got there. him off in the trees. Fanatic, they find themselves a target. Echo just to try and escape, and they won't be able to. Now, Bryle looking to try and turn onto this, but another call to push back. The Fisher onto Luna, getting a little bit of separation. Right, and Jazz, Jazz is still back here. Might have gone a bit too far finally, but the rest of Fnatic is moving in as well. They jump forward, find the kill on the moon, trying to get that finish. DJ jumps in, but you are right on top of him as well. The jump from death turns to the kill. Saberlight wants to clean up, but do they have anything left in the tank? Juan gets the TP away. Raven, BKB, TP's out. A good escape from Fnatic, although they might be able to play a little bit of cleanup there. Death, blinking one, gets out. Not going to catch any of those stragglers. Uh, overall, I would consider that Maybe a pretty big win for Undyne, considering how that fight uh, started. First off is, oh, well, even more dead. so, perhaps. He stuck around to struggle I, I think, for a second. I think everyone else is ditched, though. They're not coming. We're, we're fine. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they, they hold the tower, right? Right now, that's, that's the name of the game for Undying. They're just trying to slow things down, extend this game out as far as they can. And it's only a 2K lead, whereas it feels like, for a lot of this game, Fnatic have been in control. It's true. That's the thing that's kind of interesting about it. And using that first BKB charge, if they do start to wear down a little bit low on Fnatic, that's where maybe you're overextending slightly and things could get a little bit dicey. By the way, Orchid done on Tomato. Gotta be careful here, Fnatic, as they smoke into this. Oh, and Dubu. they need Tomato here. They're gonna break it immediately right. onto Dubu. But Let's go. Ends up dying. Oh, but the hook shot will get forward for more. Saberlight, he's also caught. Has to back out of there. He's dropping down lower and lower. And Undyne, they wanted to hit that timing to take the fight, but they were already too dead. This is such a good game for support clockwork because your opponent is trying to stall. They're trying to hold things out. And so when you get these little picks, they're happy to just send off Dubu. You know, push him out on the ice flow to save the rest of the village. <laughs> but in this case, DJ, you know, he just says no. He's going to hook shot way into that back line and keep that fight going. Get that plus one kill. Now looking for more. So many times, how many moments have we seen a Naga song in the Roche pit? Have to be careful about this opening. No Blink Dagger yet done on Shaker. This is the scariest time at this point in the game for Undyne if they give up this Aegis for nothing. But you can see Fnatic respecting it. Jump forward though. They find one again. It's Dubu. Song immediately afterwards. Thinking about jumping. They want to get the vision. Moon can get it right on top. And with the silence afterwards, do they have enough for the fight? The Fisher comes out, connecting on the two, trying to find more of a Raven. Walks up to Hyger. Look at that overwhelming odds. They do so much damage, but is it going to be enough? DJ on top and catching two in the cogs. They bit off more that they could chew, and Chuan was happy to give it to him afterwards. As Bryle does a little ring around the rose, he tries to DP out, and oh! Zigdwin, they should have zagged. Fnatic not quite able to catch him. 
Oh, that orchid follow up there, just not enough uh, to, to get the finish in the air. In the end, coming off, not sure where the uh, the press the attack. Yeah, it was the the uh, press attack on the void spirit. Figured that had to be it because it was looking really dangerous. I thought mm. the soul burn was going to kill him for sure. So excellent play there from Death to get the save, and that's going to put them right into the Roche pit. And with this, no Naga song. And Fnatic in the pit. It should be first Aegis of the game and a 4,000 gold lead right now for Fnatic. Moon has to back out. Oh, he's still so close not to blank. Blank dagger. It's, it's, just, like, it's like just there, though, you know? Oh, man. It's like I just get home and sell the stick. Like, please. I just sell the quality, but sell anything. If just the danger out. is there, yeah, it'll be all right. And then we can wait uh, 50 seconds for that to, to pop out here. But mid lane, Dubu. Lots of OVs and sentry vision here. And now a flare, even. DJ, you know, he wants oh, it. Oh, get out of there. That was close. The hook shot almost able to connect. They will quelling blade it down as Dubu pulled back into position. DJ now moving also, and with a duel committed, they find another kill, taking him down. 50 dual damage on the Legion. Yeah, and of course, this comes back to another discussion of just like delaying the game and waiting things out. And there is an additional punishment there. Clockwork is getting these hook shots, is giving you like two kills instead of one at times, but also infinite scaling. So strong. Every time we win one of these duels, we're going to pump that damage up now up to 50, hitting some big numbers here. Multiple reps for death. Let's get huge. They will take down that tier two tower in the top lane as well, which opens up the outpost. Fnatic trying to put their well, grip really on, on the saber light down here. Ravens in the area too. Dyer's top <laughs> Dangerous top. stuff, yeah. And trying again, to catch a, a cheeky little pick, I think. Just thinking about how these teams have gotten here as well, and Undyne's path, and sort of the, the love affair that they've had with Southeast Asia Dota yep. throughout the past yep. couple of days. Uh, you know, the, the turnaround where they're winning over EG, put T1 in the upper bracket, and now facing off against Fnatic to Radiant potentially Radiant eliminate them. And Fnatic looking like they might be able to do it here. Oh, and look, this, these same plays we saw before. You, you have the treants in your air, like in your side of the map, all the time. So it's something surprising, but you can also just smoke and follow them as Fnatic. This is a play they'll like to do every once in a while because they feel like these stupid annoying things you can just run up and kill, but right. every once in a while four heroes pop out and you know your biggest core is going to die. Sometimes it's good to bait a hero, but if you can bait Treants, that's even better. But will they fall for that bait? Time will tell. Blink Dagger done. Fnatic. Ooh, does he think about going? I mean, they've got vision up top on that pillar, so they actually see Tomato farming. They also uh, recently spotted the uh, the storm moving through too. They see Brile, so they have zero fear on this side of the map right now. Fnatic are just playing so well right now in this game one of a best of one, and Raven going to pressure and take another tier two tower. Oh, this has got to be a timing, right? They just got the BKB on the storm. Mumiander wants to use this big blink. Only level 10. Vision but has the four points in the aftershock. Has to be careful. They have that ward up on the high ground. Gonna pop it right at the start. Jump now onto Raven. Can they get there? In time for the press attack. No, nothing. Chase down. Maybe looking for round two now. Chew and pull. Gonna pile. They caught him. The echo connects on the three. But where's the damage? It was the song. The timing. Oh, that was not how it was supposed to go for a died. And now Dubu gonna get dual the Fissure to separate. But the range is more than enough as they take down that Enchantress. Chew goes in for more. And now the control's gone on a boat. Buyback. Can they kill off this Void Spirit? But there's the press, the attack to keep him alive. And now the, oh, it comes out for round three again. Raven will not be denied. And DJ giving the tip to his old coach. Oh, unbelievable. 18 to 7 and a 9,000 gold lead in Fnatic. I don't know if they're leaving. Uh, Tomato's just heading out of there. He knows right now, right? Oh, he actually finds DJ. I'm able to Moving catch there. there. Oh, yeah, back in the down. Bryle looking for more. And that's another kill as they do bring down DJ. So something on the board for Undying, but Fnatic, they got the bigger win. They take that bottom lane of Barracks. That team fight is just so difficult. Like the communications, trying to figure out what to do off that Aegis. It feels like, you know, maybe you just want to give it to them when the Aegis goes yeah. down, right? But the, the problem is you also understand the situation you're in as Undying, and this looks like a time where perhaps you can get that big play. You can make the turning play for your team and then the song and the echo overlaid clearly something happened there in the comms well and now you're you're staring down the barrel this is where you really test yourself as a team can undyne hold off the pressure from Fnatic. Fnatic, again, two TIs in a row going out in this position. They want this year to be different for them. But will it happen? Can they close this one out in a dominant position here? 
Tomato are right back to the same spots here as Fnatic take the bottom top. Again, still under that ward for Tomato and Brile. Talk about value vision here. They're going to know the Storm TP back home, though. Tier 3 tower being hit. Raven, Scotty, done. And Tomato hoping to stop this. But the jump in from downtown wants to find one kill. Can they get Raven hanging on to that yeah. BKB? No fears. That shard there. It's too strong. And with Saber Light dead just like that, they can go for another round as soon as they regen back up to full. And they're just showing Raven a lot of the times. DJ's like hiding in the side trees, right? You have that big counter initiation play ready from the clockwork. Death is there also, has that press the attack ready at a moment's notice. They jump again, but can they find the kill? The taunt afterwards on the moon. The captain is going to be found, but will he die? They have the song to separate it a little bit. Getting Moon Meander out of there, but they've already lost Bryle. I don't know if it's going to end up mattering. He wants to save his captain, but they can't save his life as Death comes in with one more press the attack. Rax falling in the mid lane. Fnatic, they won't be denied. They played masterfully this game. They, they took such excellent little risks in their play where they, they brought heroes maybe a little earlier than you'd expect, but utilizing that aura again to just fight with numbers and take the most important team fights. And then also the coverage they have here onto Raven. They make his life so easy with the press the attack, the defensive hook shots that come in and cover. And How do you initiate? The silence. They've got no way in right now with the Earthshaker dead. They're ready to go for round two. Look at this. And Fnatic, they're, they're playing so safe. They know the only way that things can get really bad is if they all get caught. But there's a way to catch one. Jabs. Under control. Raven just going to TP out. Very well played. Chewin. Oh, he gets caught. All right. Big one. Big one. Dying. Able to find something on the way out of this as they chase down Jabs. And now going to kill off this Void Spirit. Glimmers here. Silver linings around a stormy cloud that's been this game. Yeah, it's a very small rebate after losing a couple lanes of racks here, but uh, the game continues. It's a best of one. Surely uh, they're going to fight this one right to the end. And we have definitely seen wilder comebacks at TI. There's no doubt about that. Well, when thinking about, you know, buybacks that potentially could come out in a little bit here, uh, we can sort of keep our eyes on that as something that Undyne right now only have it on the shaker. They gotta go. They gotta keep them off balance. Void Spirit's still down. Go oh, fight. Looking oh. to use this dunk. Looking for it. But they can vision yet again. Raven there. Hook shot oh, into the big old hit as they come through on to both of them. Just like that. Fnatic take three. Yo, Raven's pretty good at Dota. Gotta watch out for that man. Feels like they did such a good read. Like, I mean, they have such deep vision as well, of course, on the side of Undying. So, or rather, on the side of Undying's map. So, so Fnatic, no, sort of the, the options they have to try and get back into this game. And right. I, I definitely appreciate going for the risky plays. You can't sit in your base right now as Undying, or you're just going to be doomed. That hero's not even in the game. Well, oh. they just picked Nagasai, which works in a different sort of dooming, it seems. DJ, what a, what a performance from him on this clock. You know, I think that there are a lot of people and a lot of fans of Fnatic that were questioning the DJ swap over to position five and if that was actually going to make it. He's still looking unbelievably strong. And, you know, even without all of the same resources that we're seeing from Jabs, they're both playing immaculately together. Yeah. And, you know, he'll play the, the poorer fives when necessary and do it quite well. But I love it when you get these heroes that can have a little bit better impact from that role. And I think clock's probably the best one. Again, trying to hold off this pressure, but Raven is again going to walk up high ground and Saberlight hoping to stop something here. Wants to get to the back line, but the taunt is there. A little bit off the mark with the remnant. Raven still standing One up. One last center. rack there. And it's going to go down as they jump into the back line. Ryo wants to get this kill on this Legion Commander. A good jump to the other side afterwards, but Saberlight down low. Raven walking in right on top. They find him on the back line again. Moon calls. Moon killed and GG is going to be called as Fnatic. They're just a little bit too clean in this one. They're so strong, they're so strong. Fnatic, strong enough to survive the best of one at TI. And look at that. That's relief. That's what that is. Absolutely. And again, you know, you think about this roster at various different points, and Dubu there, obviously, heartbreaking loss.